a few years ago, when we were researching the stories of our stained glass windows, we began to realize that the sun in June was setting through the middle of the building. And so we came here to sit and watch it on, December, on June 21st in the year 2020, in the middle of the first lockdown for COVID. We distanced ourselves and watched it happen. But if you look now at the windows here, you can see that the sun is beginning to move toward the middle window. And if you look at the back or the front of the building, whichever way you want to think about it, you'll see that the sun is now hitting that collection box that we put in the middle of the aisle. The sun has already stretched out the entire length of that aisle, and you can see the pattern of the stained glass window in the aisle. Bishop Fleming knew something about churches built along the axis of the solstice. He was a Franciscan. Our first five bishops were Franciscans, and they knew that some of the old Gothic churches, Notre Dame in Paris, Chartres in France, and also the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi in Italy, were built on that same solsticial axis. They wanted the same here. It was part of their Franciscan heritage to celebrate the movement of the calendar year, of the sun, of nature, and to celebrate the rhythm of life that God created. And so they wanted the same thing here. If you've ever traveled through the Franciscan um, Mission Churches of California, about 20 of them are built the same way. The Franciscans were consistent in sharing the spirit of their founder who called creation brother sun, sister moon, sister death. Here in this building, there are many nods to that Franciscan heritage. One really obvious is the way the building's built. Then, it's that the sun sets, like it does in Chartres in France, through the windows depicting the apostles. So Bishop Mullock, our fifth bishop and last Franciscan, and his family donated this suite of windows behind me, five windows that depict the apostles. Now, if you're really smart, you know there weren't 15 apostles but they added the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, and St. Paul to make 15. And so the sun sets on the solstice through the saints, through the apostles, because we believe that at the end of our life, when we come to see God finally face to face, God is going to say, have you lived your life like this community of saints? Have you lived your life in service of your sisters and brothers so that you belong to this communion of saints? A second nod to that Franciscan heritage you'll see over my left shoulder. Shining through the window behind me, or to my left, to your right, is the nativity window. We have two nativity windows here, but this is a beautiful one from France. And right next to this, though many of you can't see it right now, is the window of St. Francis of Assisi. Francis was supposed to have been the first person to put together a live nativity, a live depiction of the birth of Christ. And so it's no coincidence that those two windows sit together in this building. But enough about that. As you listen to the beautiful music tonight, watch the sun continue on its path down the main aisle. You will see that it's already coming to the middle of the building, pointing out that rhythm of the year. This is the longest day, the day that signifies for Christians the eternal day of living in God's presence. 
Now, a few work, words about our performers tonight and about the pieces that you will hear. So, you are going to hear John Fitzgerald on the organ, Nicholas Lim on the piano, and Susan Chalker Brown reciting some poetry and other prose pieces for us. What you will hear is this. The music this evening is a short program of six pieces, three for the organ, three for the piano, performed by Nicholas and John. John is our executive director for the Basilica Heritage Foundation. And you'll hear three readings read by one of our own members, Susan Chalker Brown. Tonight is an homage to the medieval age and the French Gothic cathedrals as its profound symbols of creation and of the New Jerusalem. We will hear two movements from Leon Bollman's Sweet Gothic. At the age of 32, two years before his death, Bollman wrote this, solo, this suite, his most famous work. The first movement of this music, the introduction, the chorale, is a call and an answer, a back and forth. The music alternates between a powerful full chorus and a much more quiet response. It echoes the antiphonal masses written for the great French cathedrals, and it symbolizes the overwhelming call of God to Mary and her equally powerful response. The second movement that you'll hear is a prayer to Our Lady a meditation on Mary as intercessor, seated among the stars as queen of heaven. And the third piece of music you'll hear is the Ave Maria of Arkadelt. It was composed in the 1860s by Franz Liszt, who interestingly in his later life became a Franciscan monk. Did you know that? Though he never became a priest. It was based on a composition of the Renaissance composer Jacques Arkadelt. And so we hope you enjoy these pieces. The piano pieces that will follow, that Nicholas will play for us, are Impressionist pieces. Ravel's movement de minuet makes sonic references to the swinging of bells. Summerland by the American Black composer William Grand Still gives his interpretation of heaven, of life after death, his work as a composer, and the voice of uh, the Harlem Re Renaissance will be heard. So you will also hear Laura Gilpin's poem, The Two-Headed Calf, recited for us by Susan. And that will remind us that the calf while we, I'm trying to read in the dark now, <laughs> while we may not be, um, be here for a long time, we'll have been given the gift of perception. So let's listen to these pieces. Nicholas will con continue with Claire de Lune by Debussy. And after the celebration, you will get to share some community and continue to watch the sun set um, with a reception with some uh, food and drink in the side ambulatories. And so without further ado, I turn you over to John. The Canticle of Brother Sun and Sister Moon by St. Francis of Assisi. Most high, all powerful, all good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, all honor, and all blessings. To you alone, most high, do they belong, and no mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Sun, who is the day through whom you give us light. 
and he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor. Of you, Most High, he bears the likeness. Praise be you, my Lord, through sister moon and the stars. In the heavens you have made them bright, precious, and fair. Praise be you, my Lord, through brothers wind and air, and fair and stormy, all weathers moods, by which you cherish all that you have made. Praise be you, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, humble, precious, and pure. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, producing varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who grant pardon for love of you and bear sickness and trial. Blessed are those who endure in peace. By you, Most High, they will be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are they she finds doing your will. No second death can do them harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. Verses from the book of Revelation. I turned round to see who was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the middle of them, one like a son of man, dressed in a long robe tied at the waist with a belt of gold. His head and his hair were white with the whiteness of wool, like snow, his eyes like a burning flame, his feet like burnished bronze when it has been refined in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of the ocean. In his right hand he was holding seven stars. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword, double-edged, and his face was like the sun shining with all its force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. It is I, the first and the last. I am the living one. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman robed with the sun, standing on the moon, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who will have washed their robes clean so that they will have the right to feed on the tree of life and can come through the gates into the city. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the sake of the churches. I am the sprig from the root of David and the bright star of the morning.
The Two-Headed Calf by Laura Gilpin. Tomorrow, when the firm boys find this freak of nature, they will wrap his body in newspaper and carry him to the museum. But tonight, he is alive and in the north field with his mother. It is a perfect summer evening, the moon rising over the orchard, the wind in the grass. And as he stares into the sky, there are twice as many stars as usual.
to Nicholas and to John and to Susan. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us tonight. To all of you, thank you for coming to share this beautiful experience of surround, being surrounded by sight and sound and by the spirit of this night. As we have enjoyed these sights and sounds, the sun has gone down the main aisle. And if you turn now, you'll see the reflection of the window on the choir loft in the middle. The sun is going to continue to play with those windows for a while. We will stay around. You're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. We have some refreshments in the West Ambulatory, and you're welcome to share that. Thank you for sharing this night with us. There is a free will offering to support the work of the Basilica Heritage Foundation. We mu very much appreciate any contribution you can make to the ongoing maintenance and enhancement and interpretation of this wonderful historic, cultural, and religious site. Thank you. If anybody is interested and willing to make a climb, John is willing to take you up to the organ loft in small groups, 10 or 15, and you're welcome to go and watch those windows from the organ loft. So just let John there uh, to, my le to your right, my left, know that you're interested and he'll take you up. Meanwhile, have a snack. <laughs> <laughs>